Hello and welcome to the first official uh, video of Ask the Prof. If you don't know what that is, go back and watch the uh, intro that I posted a, a few weeks ago. Um, out of the number of questions that I've received, the, the most frequent one dealt with heat and how do we get rid of it, how do we manage it on race day, um, that type of thing. And so that's what I'm going to cover today. Um, so the first thing we're going to show is the heat equation. Not, so um, basically what we have is delta H or change in heat equals metabolism plus or minus conduction plus or minus convection plus or minus radiation and then minus evaporation okay so metabolism is how we generate heat right our the human body is about as efficient as an american car uh, we only get about 25 to 30 percent at most of the energy that we burn of the calories that we burn go towards mechanical energy the rest is lost as, as heat and so as our metabolism goes up we increase the pace we increase the power the amount of heat that we produce also goes up Conduction is going to be heat gained or lost by touching something. Uh, convection is going to be heat gained or lost through a medium such as air or water. Radiation, typically we think of that as gaining heat from the sun, but we will also be constantly radiating heat off of our body into the environment. And we can also gain uh, heat uh, by like a reflection running on black surfaces, uh, for example, in the lava fields in Kona. <clears throat> and then finally, the last one is evaporation. And evaporation is, we can't gain heat through evaporation, we can only lose it, so that's why it doesn't have a plus or minus, just a minus. Evaporation is the most efficient form of dissipating heat in the human body. We will, under normal circumstances, at room temperature, when we're sitting around, we lose about 98% of the heat that we get rid of through evaporation. It's very, very efficient. Um, the problem is, is we can't always rely on that. And as we start to need to dissipate more and more heat, um, or the environmental conditions inhibit evaporation, for example, when it's humid, then we have to rely on other methods. All right, so the first one we'll talk about is metabolism. The easiest thing to do to start to dis or to uh, stop increasing the heat production is to decrease our metabolism or slow down. That's obviously not what we want to do, uh, but it is certainly an option. And, and uh, obviously that's something that will affect um, race day strategies. The athletes that I coach always want to know, um, you know, their exact race plan six months before the race. Well, I typically don't develop the race plan uh, until a couple days before, the final race plan at least, until a couple days before when we know exactly what the environmental conditions are going to be because if it's really hot or really, really humid, that might change uh, our power targets or our pace targets or something like that um, just so we can have a better chance of finishing off the day strong without um, going into a point of either a point of no return or a point where we're just not able to to manage we get too far behind uh we start to get dehydrated and then our performance is really really inhibited um so we've talked about metabolism we've talked about evaporation that's typically through sweat but it can also be through uh pouring water on ourself on a on a hot dry day um if we're pouring water on ourselves and that water is rolling down us then that's typically going to be convection conduction is going to be if we hold on to ice in our hands for example um, or if we are you know touching a cooler object um, in in race circumstances typically ice or just the cold water is going to be um, the best example of that uh, if you run and sit into a uh, in a cool a uh, tub of water after the race that's going to be cooling you down via conduction um, We've talked about convection uh, Radiation again. We typically can't affect this too much um, You can cover up your skin a little bit more You've seen a lot of new clothing products and a few athletes that are wearing um, Things that cover up the neck wearing a hat making sure your head is covered a visor to the face is covered um, so if it's really sunny and you can get a good fabric that's not going to retain heat but keeps the Sun off of you that can help limit um, heat gain through radiation as well 
Um, we've talked about a number of things now, but there are a few products that have come onto the market recently that I'm sure many of you seen. Uh, just as a, um, just to be completely clear, I do not have a formal relationship with either of these two companies that I'm gonna talk about, but both of them did send me the product at one point in time to test out. So um, the first one I'll mention is the Omius band. I'm sure you saw that in these in a lot of the Kona pictures. Um, that was kind of where they burst onto the scene. But it, what it is, is it's a bunch of these little briquettes that um, basically when you get it wet, it increases evaporation according to their website it dramatically increases um the surface area by having a porous briquette here so the evaporation happens much cooler and because evaporation is quite efficient then we're basically it's basically cooling the entire band down so if we're holding um or if we're wearing this on our forehead for example which is a place where we do have a lot of superficial blood flow um it's going to um cool the blood down uh, quite rapidly and hopefully keep the core temperature a little bit um, lower and allow us to maintain the metabolism that we want to maintain. Another product is um, called, it's uh, uh, from DHAM, D-H-A-M, and it's actually a battery powered wearable. So you strap this on your wrist. Um, they do have one that fits into a hat as well and basically um, you turn it on and then it cools um, a little spot back here that's metal and so that's going to sit on your wrist on the front of your wrist or the back of your wrist and cool you down through conduction again you have a lot of superficial blood flow to this area and so cooling that blood basically then takes a uh, cooler blood back to the core and takes more heat away from the core and brings it back to the surface, right? We're always trying to, to cool our core down. Uh, and that, that's what we have to, to maintain the cooler temperatures. The brain and um, the core temperature are what are gonna determine if we have to slow down or we can you know, keep on pushing. And you know, essentially that's why we start to turn really red when we start to exercise is because we have more blood that starts to go to the surface of the skin to try to cool us down. And ideally, again, that's through evaporation, but if we don't have that available, if it's really humid, for example, um, you know, if it's, if it's you know, 80 to 90% humidity, um, we're not gonna lose a ton of heat through that. So then the, the sweat has to roll off of us. And then that is um, through convection. So um, on days when it's really humid, hydration obviously becomes more and more important because um, if it's drier, we're not gonna sweat quite as much because we sweat a little bit, it evaporates, cools us down that way. It's very, very efficient, like we've said. And so we don't lose as much through sweat. When um, it's really humid and evaporation isn't happening at a fast rate, we're going to then have to sweat a lot more because that water then has to run off of us and try to take away heat um, in that way. And it's just not as effective. Um, so on those days, it's really important as you're going through um, the race or the training uh, to keep yourself as wet as you possibly can. During racing, you, they typically have sponges um, that you can uh, throw on yourself, throwing water on yourself at aid stations as much as you possibly can. Um, if they do have ice, throw ice in your jersey. I like to carry ice in my hands. Uh, typically, if I grab ice every mile or so, it lasts just about um, the time I need to get to the next mile. Um, so those are some of the tips that you can do you also definitely on a hot day you definitely need or or a humid day it doesn't necessarily have to be hot it can be you know 75 degrees fahrenheit and uh 95 humidity and that's a pretty tough day to compete in um on those types of days you have to adjust your nutrition plan to make sure that you are including a lot more fluids um just from some of the testing that i've done in the heat lab um, I can go anywhere from four pounds an hour of sweat to over eight pounds an hour, just depending on the environmental conditions. Obviously, in uh, an Ironman or a half Ironman, you would say four plus, to, you know, plus or minus four hours or to plus or minus eight hours. 
uh, if I'm losing up to eight pounds an hour and I'm not doing a good enough job replacing that, you know, that's, you know, I'm not going to make it to the finish line in very good form. Um, so, um, obviously you have to adjust, uh, to whatever the environmental conditions are throwing at you. Uh, hope uh, this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. Leave any questions you have about heat or uh, in the comments below. Or if you have a topic that you want me to cover uh, in future Ask the Pro or Ask the Prof videos, leave those in the comments below. Thank you much.